So how many tracks do you think it had? Ten tracks. Ten different tracks to get every one of that audio. And um, I'm going to show the video, the video clips. And part of it is the intensity that makes this so amazing. But part of it is just the design of all of it. So let me show you the video. Those of you who think that audio does not matter, you think again. that it's a minute. One of the most difficult parts as you create audio and video in our class is meeting the requirements of time. And I think all of us, when we want to do a feature film, right, in two minutes. Very, very challenging. That's a lot of work to take something like that, break it down, and make it one minute. But you have to do that in this class and create masterpieces because they become part of your portfolio. And even though you think that all of us, as we watch them, I can't tell a story without doing it in three minutes, but 29 people are. So when you see a requirement of time, make sure that you're respectful of that. I don't say anything about an extra 12 seconds. I never say anything about being short four seconds. But when you, everyone's doing a one minute and you're doing four, I don't even show it. So make sure when you're creating, look at the requirements and tell your story in that allotted time. So go to your start button and you're gonna type in just AU. And once you do, you'll see audition at the very top. It is a black box with the letter A and U. Double click. Okay, this is what your screen looks like, kind of similar to what you'll know. This is your work area or the editor, editor window right here. Down here where you see levels, music when it's played and you see the sound wave, the levels should stay in the yellow green area. And if you ever see red, Red is, you'll see it turn a little bit red, a little bit orange. You're starting to distort the sound wave. So you'll want to reduce the volume in order to get rid of what we call clipping. I, I guess it has different names, but in my class I call it clipping. This will register those levels for you. So you'll be able to see, is this distorted noise, distorted audio, and how can I fix that? Because we don't want it to clip. And I'll show you that in um, this audio program audition. Over here, everyone, is where you'll see the saved file name as you compile your audio. We're going to use what's called a multi-track. Multi-track means that I can move my sound on individual tracks so that I can maneuver them around. If you hear a single track, Instead of them being on top of each other, they're all on one track, okay? The extension given for an audition file is .sesx, stands for session. You'll never see an audio file called session out there. We will always export it in terms MP3, MP4, AVI, a WAV file. Those are the types of um, things that you see on the web, right? 
The purpose of this session, SESX, is to compile it. That's how Audition allows you to see all the details and instructions of your video. And then you will always do an export. There is no point in you um, uploading your SESX for me. What I'll have you do is take a picture of it. Once you've created your masterpiece, you'll hit your print screen key. You'll, and then you'll put it in a Word doc and save it as a PDF. And I wouldn't do that, but some of my students have turned in masterpiece of other artists and said it was theirs. <laughs> and I caught it, believe it or not. So you'll have to create a screenshot of everything in audio and video. It will also be submitted with the WAV file or the AVI MOV file when we do video. Okay? You can also, um, with a microphone or the microphone of your own computer, um, in CS6, you now can go down here and click the record button and you actually can do voiceover, create your own sounds right on your computer. Then, um, this too has a history, so as you create things, it'll keep a history of every single thing that you've done. Okay? So we're going to go up here and do File, New, Multitrack. Control N is a quick way to start a new session. When you get to this session, it's asking for a name. We're just going to call this in class underscore sound underscore example. You're not going to submit this. You're all just going to go through the motions of doing it. Then you'll turn in your in class one underscore your first name underscore your last name. Now before you end, before you press OK, you need to browse. So if you'll all click the Browse button, this is a different destination um, menu that you're looking at. If you'll find your DGM 1110, then you're going to want to go to In Class, Folder 2. Find Audio, and go. if you'll go one step further, there's one called Audio Sounds for Class Learning. Anytime you create a session. Here is the folder that is needed with the session. It is compiling all of the instructions that are necessary to make this audio session work. So it automatically happens. If you'll go ahead and click OK, you now um, have your new session. You will see up here a multi-track. If not, it just means you're on the waveform. This is a toggle key. If I click waveform, oh, don't do it yet though because I don't have a wave there. It'll stay on multi-track because that's how it's starting. We'll have to move in some sounds to do that. Notice here is the name of the file. In class sound example dot SESX. That is the compiling extension given in Audition to create this. These are all multi-tracks. You can have an infinity amount of multi-tracks. You can just keep adding them and adding them and adding them as they come in. It is measured in hours, minutes, and seconds. So you can see that going across the top. So if I tell you that I want it to be 30 seconds, it's easy to be able to see 30 seconds. Over here, this is your mute button. So if you want to turn off a sound to hear the other sounds, this is your mute button. If you go here, this is if it, you want it solo. Here is um, the arm for the record. If you go over here on track one, if you double click inside there, it's very similar to layer one, layer two, layer three. So this is where you could say Darth Vader, be very specific, my own recording, ballet music, you will give each of these their own names and when we load them in there, all right? This is known as your scrub bar. I don't know. Do you guys have a different name for it? I've called it a scrub bar since birth. So it, it probably has another name, but um, it has a yellow indicator at the top, and it slides. See me slide it? It's a marker, and it marks w wherever it starts. If you hit your space bar at any point, it begins to play. There's nothing to play, but when you hit your space bar, it will play. 
instead of having to just hit play here, that still will work. Um, you can also hit your home key on your keyboard. So everyone try that, just hit home, and it moves your um, scrub bar to the beginning. If you want to um, play anything, you just once again hit your space bar. From wherever the location of the scrub bar is, that's where it will begin to play. If you want to get to the end of your piece, there's nothing there, but if I had um, sound audio pieces listed, your END on your keyboard, that's a quick way to get to the end as well. Don't push it because it will go to infinity end. But home and end will move you back and forth. If you want to zoom in and zoom out, I'm going to put a, I'll put a piece in there in just a minute. I'm just telling you these because I'm going to lose you in a minute when I start to do this. If you use your plus and minus key, that is zooming you in and out of your sound wave. So those are keyboard strokes that we're going to use um, all of the time inside of here. Not to say you couldn't zoom here, because you can. I like to keep it simple for you when you're first starting. Just the plus and the minus make that easy. Okay? Anytime you see an asterisk up here to the side of any of the sound waves or the um, actual file name, it means you've added something new and it needs to be resaved. Because you get lost in time, periodically save. Now, because this has already been saved as a session, the only way to start moving sound into your multi-track is to actually import the sound. You won't open the sound, you'll open the session. What you want to do is import the sounds that you want to mix, okay? I have purposely tried to find, as a teacher for a million years, sounds that would mean something to you over time. So I don't have the latest and the greatest, but I don't have the oldest ever. What I have is classics. Okay, what Kim Brown believes are classic sounds. You can agree or disagree. So, but I have these already for you so that you don't have to go find sound. But you can always, you can find sound anywhere you want. You can go to your iPod, you can go to websites. But for now, just use my classic sounds as we create this. But if you'll all do this, file, import, file. File, import, file. Okay, when you get here, the first time, you've got to go to your DGM Assets folder. In class, audio, audio sounds for learning. When you get here, everyone, it's automatically happening with the session. And if you double click inside of here, there's your session file. It creates a folder and it puts the instructions with it. After we export, it's going to put another file inside there that gives it the instructions of an export. So remember, you can't just save randomly anywhere. It's all got to be self-contained in that in-class audio folder under audio sounds for learning. Now if you look in here, I have provided you with all these sounds. Okay, so here's what glass wave would sound like. So for me, if you could just entertain me, I'm going to pick three and then I'm going to let you pick two and add to it, all right? The three to start with and then you can go back and add those and we'll do that in about ten minutes. The first one I want you to do is go get Batman, hold on to your control key, 20th century, and dark side. Anybody know what that is before even looking at it? So 20th century, hold on to your control key, Batman wave, and dark side. Then go ahead and click open. Now they don't move on to your multi-track, they just come into your session. When it comes in, it will tell you the duration. It will also tell you the sample rate. Now I've brought, I've told this um, session to do a 48 kilohertz, okay? Notice that some of these sample rates are a quarter of that, half of that, so they don't match. And they're also mono instead of stereo. So what happens is 
When you're working with sound, it's nice that they're all the same. In the new version of CS6, it, without you doing anything, it will change that for you. We're going to start with one sound. We're going to do 20th century. To put it into the multi-track, you just click, drag it to track number one. Notice it's coming back and it's saying, hey, Kim, this doesn't match the sample rate you want the session to be. If you'll just click don't show this alert again, I'm just going to tell it, you know what, make them all match 48 kilohertz. Notice what happens when you do that is now I have a century, 20th century and it has adjusted the 48 kilohertz, okay? Right. It has made those changes for you, all right? So as you do this, I'm just going to have it start right at the left, okay? So have it line, slide it over so there's just not this empty space. Now sound is waves. It's made up of waves. The higher the wave, the louder it is, the greater the amplitude, right? So um, here's what it looks like on the wave on here. This yellow line is actually the volume control. You can just click and drag. I'm going to show you don't do anything. Let me just show it all and then you can choose your favorite. You can drag this line and drop it down. Now volume, when it comes in, have you all listened to the radio or to the um, television? And all of a sudden, when it moves from one program to another, you, your volume, you think something's wrong with your TV because either it's really, really loud or it's really, really low. What it means is whoever created that audio, it, the volumes are all not the same. There is a way to take all of your sounds and match the volume. I'm going to show you one of those techniques to be able to do that. You can do it on this yellow line. You can also go right here and you can change the volume right here. There's another place. Notice I get a finger with a ribbon. I can take it to the left to drop the sound or the volume. I can take it to the right to increase the volume. And by looking at my sound wave, I know when it peaks, I know that's the high point. And when you see a smaller sound wave, it's when it's not. I'm going to play this, everyone. You can do it, too. You've all heard that, right? You've all heard that sound. Did you all look at the levels? Now look down at the bottom at the levels. So there's no distortion in this sound whatsoever because I'm staying in the green and the yellow zone. I'm going to increase this volume to distort that music so that you can hear what does it mean when it goes when you see the red. Okay, so now watch. Okay, just by raising the volume, I'm now hitting the red zone or the clipping. So that's a quick fix for you to go, okay, I, if any, any time you see something that is, could be at risk at being distorted, all you have to do is lower the volume. So now you know how to change the volume. There's another place. If you'll double click on your sound wave, individually you can um, change things with just that individual sound wave. Notice here, now I've blackened this tab that says waveform. That means because I'm only on this particular wave. You can see the name of it, 20th century, right here. You get a full blown of the wave spilled out for you. You now can move your scrub bar through it. And I wanted to show you this. Some of my favorites is spooky because I'm terrified. So. I'm trying to overcome that, but I'm terrified when it's scary. And music, like if you took the music off and you watched scary things, it wouldn't be scary. It's the music and the audio that terrify us. Part of what makes you terrified is the intensity. It starts out really slow and it starts out really soft and it grows in intensity and crescendos till you are just spooked. And when it's silent, Sometimes silence, and you can do that to your audio, make it completely silent. That is a very neat effect if you're trying to do that. 
to start that though, you never want to start a scary sequence very, very loud, right? That, then you'd kill the whole action of the audio. So you can do um, fade in, fade out. And that's a great tool to use as you're using audio. Look how simple it is. I'm just going to send my scrub bar home. And here's your fade in. They've done a pretty good job on this to already have it. But I just am going to show you how you swing this pendulum. You grab this gray box and you click and drag. Can you all see that gray box in the top left hand corner? Click and drag and look what it does to your sound wave. It builds it, right? It's fading it in, starts out soft and then gets louder. So I guess you all figured out that the one at the end, you just, this will make it fade out. So one of my, one of the things that as a new novice designer in audio and video is I teach my students how to do rolling credits. And at the end of a movie, when you're watching rolling credits, there's two things I want you to think about. Music matters. As they're looking through the rolling credits and even having a movie clip, I love Monsters, Inc., that you're still watching the movie and down it, there's still something happening and the credits are rolling through. But notice that it always plays, the music plays, and then it gets a little bit softer and then it ends. Sometimes as a new student creating videos, you're so excited to just get that rolling credit over, you don't think about the abruptness of, okay, my rolling credits end, ended, my music ends too. And sometimes you end the music on a high, loud note and in the middle of a song. And we all recognize that, right? It seems unfinished. And because you only have this short time to create these small feature films, make those things matter and your rolling credits. It's okay if it goes a little bit longer, seconds don't matter, and then make it fade out. It makes it more polished as you do your video. The other thing is if you're telling a story, and I'm including this with audio because they kind of go hand in hand. When you're telling a story, especially a documentary, and at the end, to finish the story, somebody goes to prison for 15 years, somebody gets out of prison because they weren't supposed to be in 15 years, you know how they roll those credits and they roll it so fast you can't even read it? That is my biggest pet peeve. Do you think that I can pick up three words and I know the ending to the story? Or they have it too close together and I can't read it? So now that you get to create your own videos, I'm going to show you how to slow it down, space it out, and end the story with those documentaries with the true facts of what happened at the end of the story. And you can have music play. I love music playing at the end, just a really soft, um, a soft um, tone as you're doing it. On this multi-track right here, you're going to add all these different sounds. You have to determine what all of us should hear. If I pick up, this is notorious, I have, when I pick up my daughter from school, I already have my radio on and I love it and I love it loud. Then she gets in and she's the first one I pick up two days a week and she is like this. She can hardly wait to tell me eight hours of information in less than three minutes. And she starts talking and she thinks I can't hear her. So she increases the volume and then my cell phone will ring and I'll have to, you know what I mean? And at some point, which one's more important? And I'll know that because I turn off the volume, either I don't, of my radio, and I don't answer my cell phone, and then I just focus on her so that her three minutes. And that's what happens as an audio engineer. You have to say to me, okay, the, the thing that I want my audience to know is what they're saying, or is it the music, or is it the rolling credits with the music? You have to determine that by changing the volume and so that I can make a choice between all three louds, right? And when you load those on top of each other, you'll have to make that decision. And um, for people who have amazing hearing, you don't want to frustrate your audience with the screaming and the, the voice that they have to hear, okay? Okay, so um, on here, here's another thing that you can do. If you need fade in and fade out, but let's say through 20th century, and it probably doesn't make sense to do this, but let's just say that I want Darth Vader to have his voice come in in the middle, okay? 
I can actually have the 20th century playing, right? And I can drop the volume just in between. Try this. And for me, you'll listen to this yourself and make these determinations. So just pretend that right here, halfway in the middle, is where I want it to happen. This is you creating what we call key points. Right here is where I'm going to add Darth Vader, OK? Darth Vader's voice is going to come in here, and I'm just going to put a keyframe there. I can also mark it. Let me teach you how to mark. If you click on the letter M, it's on your keyboard, the letter M for marker. It will put a marker up here to mark exactly where you want something to be added or subtracted or whatever. I can actually mark it and I'll be able to see it, a dotted line, white line as where I marked it. And then I'm also going to mark the end. So I take my scrub bar and let's just say right where this dips is where I'm going to have it end. So once again, I hit the letter M and I mark it, okay? So this is where I'll put Darth Vader's voice. Well, I know if I play this from marker to marker, it's pretty loud, right? So if I put Darth Vader and that on top of it, I can already mark key points right here. So there's the beginning and the end. And right after it, everyone, I'm going to put another marker just right after it. And I'm going to pull that marker down. See me do that? I can pull it down so that there is no, I can pull this down with those key points. And just for this segment where I marked it, I can now move in Darth Vader. I guess you all assume dark side was Darth Vader. I'm going to drag it in and I'm going to line it up with my marker. Okay? So now when I play this, and I know we haven't really heard it because you'll get the chance to listen to and move things around. Okay, they probably don't really go together. I should have done that with Batman, actually. But I think you get my point. Here is where the volume is loud. I can drop the volume of another piece of music where I can put voiceover in there. All right? And I can mark it just using the letter M to be able to do that. Okay? So and let's say with Darth Vader that the only part that I want is what's in my two markers. Okay, right here. You can use what we have as a razor, um, or I like split. If you hold on to your control key, and I'm on it right now, and see where my scrub bar is? If I do control K, it splits my video, or my um, audio, right where my scrub bar is. Now I can take this and slide it over. Okay, try that with me. If you go in the menu, you can find it under, I always, flip, split. And it's nice with video too, that same thing happens with video, and then you can just slide it over. See that? Anytime you want to get rid of something, you just press your delete key. Or you can right click and press your delete key. Everything, there's millions of things that you can see on a right click. Don't be afraid to right click anything in audio. You can go in here and just cut. Um, oh, you can do so many things. Here's this ripple delete. So if you, if you have a piece and you want to get rid of it, you can ripple delete and it will move everything over when you ripple it. Not only can you do that, I'm going to just um, pull in Batman, everyone. Pull it on to track number three. I'm going to play it so you can hear it. I'm going to mute the other two. So that this is the Batman. So you all know what that music is. Um, when you get, notice how long this one is. And it'll tell you over here, you know that it's a long piece because it's a minute and 10 seconds. So if you ever want to get rid of things, I'm just going to, before we do this, we rename everything. Track one, everyone, is called 20th Century. You go through the process of changing that to 20th century, or names that mean something to you. It's nice to be able to look at the track and know what, write what you're on. Darth Vader.
and Batman. So I'm going to double click on Batman to show you a few things that you can do with this too. If you don't see a wave, it means it's silence, or we call it dead air. And this can be removed. All you do is I'm just taking my left mouse, left click, drag, and I can remove anything. Click it. You can right click, cut, right click, delete. My favorite, I'm a keyboard. You can tell I keyboard a lot of this in sound. I just press my delete key. And you can get rid of anything. You can listen to it. To the Batmobile. Let's go. Let's say that that's all I needed was to the Batmobile. I can click and drag and press my delete key and get rid of everything else. Okay? You can just pick whatever portions. Or I can listen. And let's say, okay, right when it gets here. And let's say right after Batman, I want to get rid of this. I just click and drag and I can press, press my delete key and get rid of whatever. If you delete something you don't mean to, it's only affected here on the multi-track. It has not ever touched the original document. If you want, to, if you do something and you think, oh, I didn't mean to do that, edit, delete audio, it will undo what you just did. You can also have a record of your history. So sometimes you'll say to me, oh, Kim, I liked it better back when. Then you just go to your history and you can actually edit it there. Okay? You can also silence it. So let's say I wanted Darth Vader from here to here when you're on your own. You know what I mean? You can mark it and then you can right click and just tell it to be silent right there. So you don't even have to compete with anything in between. It's called silent. I'm going to show you a couple of effects that my students love. Reverse. Darth Vader reversed is hysterical. Can I just show you that? Not everything is hysterical reverse, but Darth Vader, yeah, it reverses it back. And it's such a simple thing to do. So I'm just going to go back to my multi-form and double click on the portion of Darth Vader that I didn't split. Here it is. If you want to reverse something, you go to effects and there's reverse. Everyone ought to hear this once. You thought he was great before. So think of the cool things you could do with reverse. So under effects, because we only have such a short time in audio, and there's you could have a full-blown course just going into what all of these different effects are, please play around with them because you can't do anything to hurt anything. Just listen, what does it do, take record of it, and try it. Um, but I think I've given you enough basics that you can take five sounds and mix them together, okay? Um, just to, as a reminder, and I don't care what you pull in, let's just go back in and I'm going to go back through the steps. I want to take my scrub bar to the beginning I hit. I want to take it to the very end I click. End. I need to save because I see an asterisk, right? Control S would automatically save while you're on your keyboard. I actually want to split something. I move it there. I click Control K. Control K. I want to mark something. I click M. This M here is for what? Mute. Mute. These tracks need to be named, right? I need to name these tracks. Okay, I'm, here's the last step, everyone. You can finish your session, but I'll never know about it until you do this next part. If you'll all do a save and make sure and hit home. Yesterday, my student totally finished with this project and he sent it. He goes, Kim, I can't hear anything. There's nothing here. You have to remember to turn your mute back on, right? If you turn on your mute, I thought that was it. But he had a scrub bar all the way to the end. And he exported his video. The way the scrub bar works is you have to move it to the position you want of what you want to exit, export. Your scrub bar should be here. The purpose of exporting 
is to take all of your audio files and compress them into one so I can play it on whatever player I have on my computer. This is the process to do that. First you have to save the session or what you've done won't be recorded. Then you must move your scrub bar to the beginning of your sound and multi-track. Okay? Then you'll do this. File, export, just try it with me. Go through the process. Make sure your scrub bar's at the beginning and go to multi-track mix down, entire session. When you get here, it opens up a dialog box. Use the same name. I like you to use the same name. It matches the session to the actual exported file. They go together. Oh yeah, that means in 10 years, when I look at that wave and I want to make edits to that, oh yeah, that was those two go together, okay? But make sure that it's also in the same location as the session. So if I click Browse, is this saving in the same location? Nope, I need to put it in the folder. So I'm going to double click. Now notice there's a conformed file in there. Remember those set of instructions that I tell you are being created? You don't need to go inside of there. I'm just going to put your um, exported file inside your sound example. Okay? Then click Save. Most of the time in our class, not always, we're going to export audio as a WAV file. It's a universal file, opens really easy without plugins. It's awesome to be able to use that. If you'll go ahead and click OK, you should now see it export. Okay, how did it happen? It just takes all of these files and it compresses them into one file. The name of it is exactly the same thing as your session, but now it's called a WAV file. In order to play it, I'm going to go out of Audition and into the file folder of my thumb drive where I saved it. I'm going to double click go into DGM, in class, audio, and I had you put it inside the audio sound. Double click, and you should see inside your sound example, you should see the actual WAV file. You'll also see another set of instructions, the PKF. You can't open up a PKF, but it comes with it when it actually exports the file. If I double click everyone, I no longer will see the session, but this is what I hear when I grade you. Okay? Yours better sound so much better than mine. But it takes all of those files and it compresses it. This is what you'll upload, not the example, but the one that you actually create. It will be called in class sound1 underscore your first, your last name. Okay. Yes. How long is it supposed to be? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 35 will not kill me. Um, for those of you who have a great idea, your job is to um, take five sounds, any sounds you want, voice, music, effects, and mix them together on a multi-track. Save the session and also save the, and then export it. Okay. You can use any of the sounds in the audio learning. You can use any sounds on the internet. Mixing five sounds, that's the minimum. And see what you can do with Eric and I here to help you doing it by yourself. And starting from beginning to end, I want you to be able to at least get all your five sounds loaded, save it, cut it, play around with it, see what you can do. Okay.